Hello everybody, it's Derek Culver here with Blazing Heavens and I'm going to show you a very, very specific editing technique that may only apply to a couple of you. It may be really, really useful for a couple of you. Most of you may find this completely useless. And so it, it's the topic is color balance. And color balance is a touchy subject for someone like me who has a modded camera. My main camera has been out of commission for a while for Astro, so I've been using my backup D610, which has a full spectrum um, IR mod. And so what that means is basically you cut out the infrared filter on your camera that blocks infrared light and allows it to hit the sensor. And what that means for you is you can't use it during the day, really. I have a couple shots that I've shot on, the, on this modded camera during twilight that just are a real pain in the butt to fix with color balance. Milky Way, on the other hand, there's a lot of benefits because you will pick up a lot of that infrared light and that hydrogen alpha light that uh, is often not picked up by a lot of cameras. However, one of the biggest drawbacks is color balance. And you may have experienced this. It may be more common for people to uh, experience this when they're using one of those like Hoya red intensifiers or light pollution filters where they get a messed up color balance. So maybe this video will help for those people as well. But it's a very, very specific video. And it also, hopefully you learn some techniques as well that'll help you with um, just color balance in general. So first things first, I open up everything in Photoshop. I really don't like using Lightroom. It's more of a library. Photoshop is the way to go. First, what, first thing I'm going to do is just copy this layer over here. Rename it color balance. And I'm going to go up to filter, camera raw. First thing I do with all my Milky Way shots is mess around with the detail and noise reduction, the lens corrections for like chromatic aberration, which if you don't know what that is, chromatic aberration is when the light doesn't focus properly on your sensor because of refraction. So you get like a purple fringing um, and other colors like that. I'll go to lens correction for that. And also camera calibration. I'll show you how I use this in a minute. Um, first, I'm going to attempt to change this into a normal, typical color balance that we're used to seeing. And let's just go ahead and move the temperature all over here. It's going to get really, really purple. Move this all the way. Keep going. All right, that's looking okay. So the problem that I'm having is that there's too much of this like teal blue cast in the background. If you look at all these stars, they're really... When you zoom in, it's less noticeable. When I'm out, I don't really like it's too blue over here. For my taste, I like the way that it's it's working in the in the center. I don't like my pictures too orange with the core. That's way too orange. So if I pull it over here, too much of that blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my detail tab here, and my standard is about 20-ish noise reduction luminance to bring that up, and then blast it with color noise reduction. And what that does is it gets rid of a lot of the color noise that's in the background of your image. So if I turn it here to here, it gets rid of a lot of noise anyway. And that's typically what people do is most people will be using noise reduction. Even though this is a shot at ISO 400 on Tracker, I still use noise reduction. And I'll come in here and just kind of inspect and see what happened. Yeah, I got rid of a lot of the noise, but also gets the color noise does a really good job of getting rid of that chromatic aberration. And it, I think it does a better job for a majority of the stars than lens correction and like specifically correcting for chromatic aberration. You'll see some big chromatic aberrations around some of your bigger stars, depending on the settings that you're using. I know not everybody's on a tracker, uh, but it, you'll see it, it kind of depends. It's a picture to picture basis. So Standard, I'll start from here and then I'll mess around with the noise reduction luminance and then the color uh, noise reduction and then come into the lens correction and I don't really have any chromatic aberration. However, I will say when you're using the chromatic aberration, um, like the defringing, be very careful because you can overdo it. Sometimes I'll bring up the green one and then I'll adjust the green hue. It'll get rid of a lot of like the green chromatic aberration around stars, but then you get this like blue square around your star, and that's when you have to pull this hue and fix that. And sometimes you can get yourself in more trouble with these sliders, so be very cautious when using them. And try the detail, noise reduction, luminance, and color noise first. So after that, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to move a little bit more blue. And it's looking better. 
I'm going to come to camera calibration and camera calibration is great because you can individually control the different RGB channels. So you can control the red channel and the hue, the green channel and the blue. I don't really like using the hue. I don't get the same results. It looks very unnatural when you start messing with these channels. There are some applications where I will use this, but typically not. Come in here and the shadow tint is really, really great. It's very nice because you can tint the shadows and sometimes with the modded camera what you get is like way too green or your, your tint gets off a lot. So I'll go way too green here but let's say it's appropriate for the middle but around here we're getting that green cast. And I'll come into the shadows and I'll mess around with this uh, shadow slider and I'll pull it more to the purple blue and that's starting to look a lot more natural. So the thing is we're changing a lot of the, uh, the color balance here and sometimes it won't always be perfect between your core and then around your core sometimes this will be too blue so typically i'll come into the blue uh, primary and i'll desaturate the blue slightly and then resaturate the greens and the reds just slightly slightly and lower the blues and that'll also change your color balance just slightly here and that's it's, it's like adding contrast the way that we're messing with the uh, color balance there's no real science to this and i don't if there is i don't know it but I would recommend using the uh, camera calibration and just playing around with it. Honestly, just spend an hour and just mess around with the hues. Sometimes I like to bring my Milky Ways a little bit more red, and so it starts in the hues here. And uh, maybe I'll mess around with this. Yeah, so if I say we have our Milky Way the way it is right now, and this is good, it's a little bit too red, let's say. And I can just grab this red primary and make it a little bit more of that yellow core look. And I'm like, okay, it's a little bit yellow now, it's warmer in that sense and so now I need to go and bring my temperature a little bit over so now that I brought my temperature over I don't really like the blue cast that it's giving me so I'm actually going to adjust the blue primary and bring it more purpley no I don't like that so I can mess with this and now my core gets a little bit more red which maybe you like maybe you don't let's go here and actually I'm going to mess with the tints again so it's kind of a balancing act as you everything interacts with one another. You've got the temperature, the tint, and then the RGB channels and the shadows. And it's it's I really don't know the science behind it. It depends on a picture to picture basis. It'll depend, you know, de your in camera uh, color balance will affect this. Your how much air glow there was that night will affect this. So it's really just go in and play around with these, and you can get some more specific and cool results when editing. So I'm pretty happy with this Milky Way. Then I'll come over here and I'll just hit OK. Next step I'm going to do is I want this core to be more saturated. I, I don't want to saturate around here too much because you get more of that blue and that weird glow from the horizon. So I'll go ahead and hit Control J and copy this. I'll just name this whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go up to Filter, Camera Raw. And I'm going to up the vibrance first off so I can see more of the colors. Maybe let's just push the saturation to see. Yeah, so the modded camera will start picking up this purple stuff, this hydrogen alpha or red nebulosity that goes around here. I'll pick it up around these stars. Sometimes it'll look really bad, but sometimes it looks fine. I'll pick up more of the Trifid Lagoon areas and the Eagle Omega. I think that's what they're called. More of the nebulosity down here as well. Uh, let me lower this. I'll bring the vibrance up a bit and the saturation. That looks fine. And then what I want to do... Actually, I'm going to hit OK. So I'm going to call this Color Boost. Now I'm going to do what I originally intended. So I'm going to copy this Color Boost again. I'll name it whatever. And I want this to be a different color than around here. I want to boost the saturation here. Go to Filter, Camera Raw. And I want to change the I think the color balance slightly. So I'm going to make this more red. I'm just going to take the red hue and make it a little bit more red. I'll take the green hue as well. Slide it that way. It's very, very slight, but it's getting to be a little bit red, and I like that. I like the little bit more red look right here. So I'll just keep hitting this little guy resets all the sliders, and you can toggle them between the original sliders that you had and then what you change it to. So yeah, I'm liking this way more. It's very, very slight. You may not be able to see it in the video. And... It's not going to do anything anymore. Let me... No, it's way too green. Way too red. I 
Okay, that looks good. This is way too much, I know. So I'm going to hit OK. So maybe the objective of this layer right here, I'm going to call this red boost. So the advantage of using camera raw instead of Lightroom, I can go on and on, but basically is that you have control of masking and layering, and you can do multiple layers with different camera raw filters on them. So with the, this red boost, I'm just going to hold on Alt and click the mask button. It's going to give me a black mask. And I can come in here, I'll hit my brush, grab my brush tool, go around, let's say, 30 so you guys can see what's happening with the opacity. So go with a soft brush, soft white brush, and I'm honestly just going to manually paint in where I wanted more of that color, more of that intensity in these areas, just once or twice. I'll hit these two, hit this, hit this area. I'm hitting this little nebulosity region here. Coming in and just kind of painting in. Maybe I'll just do a little bit on the core here, a little bit right here, a little bit up here. I'll just kind of brush it along the core. I'll come over here around this area and boost the reds and this right here. So if I turn this on and off, you can see just that slight boost. We're just painting in the saturation adjustment that we did here, that red boost. And I'll hit here as well. And if at any point I want to see, I can't remember like where, so I know there's nebulosity up here, but I can't remember where it looks boosted. When I'm, I'm, I'm kind of painting blind here. I'll come over to my red boost, hold on shift and click, so then I could, it turns the layer mask off and I can see the whole adjustment where it is. So I can click this on and off to kind of see. I can even leave this on and then come in here and start painting round right here and then turn it off and it'll show that's yeah, very slight but you can paint while it's while it's on here so now I can just kinda click a bunch of times and add the purple to this area yeah let's boost it right there and I'll hold on shift again and click here maybe I want a little bit more saturation here too Okay, go ahead and zoom out, and let me turn this on and off. So it's really, really slight, but it gives you kind of the creative control to hit the places you want. And you're like, okay, maybe I don't, I like how white it is right here in the core. So I'll just grab on my layer mask and go black, and I'll just paint it out right here. And voila, we have a pretty nice Milky Way. Hope you enjoyed. Check me out on Instagram. Shoot me a message if you like this video. Take care. Bye.